first day of construction. The objective was to dig eight post holes uh, for the 4x6 posts that support the, the uh, uh, array ground mounts. Uh, I rented this machine from a local uh, rental company and it made the job a lot easier. Uh, but still, it was a full day of, of hard labor. Um, this is actually not the first day of the project. Uh, I spent several months uh, selecting products and coming up with designs and plans and getting building permits and uh, measuring for the, for the ground mounts. Uh, but this is the first day of, of actual construction. Day two of construction was a milestone. Um, I prepared the holes by tamping the bottom of each hole to make a strong foundation. And then I added a, a, sh a shovel full of, of gravel to the bottom of each hole to, for, for drainage. I'm using four by six posts for the, uh, for the array foundation. Uh, these are pretty hefty and uh, originally I was going to use 4x4s four uh, but in order to get the building permit I needed to beef everything up to 4x6s. Um, to, uh, um, at the bottom of each of the posts I drilled a hole and I put in a, a long bolt uh, so that it would get secured in the ground and prevent uh, wind from um, uh, doing what's called uplift so that will help keep the, uh, keep the arrays uh, attached to the ground. By the way, this kind of structure is called a ground mount because it's used to support solar panels on the ground rather than on a building roof. Most ground mounts are built out of steel. There's a company called Iron Ridge which has a real nice system. Uh, I chose to go with wood because I have the, uh, the tools and experience to work with it uh, rather than trying to deal with heavy 3 inch Schedule 40 steel pipe. Originally I was planning to build one large structure to support all 12 solar panels, uh, but the zoning requirement would have, I would have had to put it much closer to the house, which would be less ideal for, uh, for getting sun. Working with the Howard County Zoning Department, I came up with a compromise where I could build two smaller arrays uh, and therefore the zoning requirements are, are less stringent and I can have it um, only 10 feet from the property line which puts it in a much better spot for, uh, for getting sun.
Also, originally, I was planning to build a much lighter structure, uh, but the uh, in order to get the building permit, I had to had to beef it up. Instead of um, two by six rafters and two by eight headers, I ended up doing two by eight rafters and two by ten headers. I designed the arrays to have a tilt angle of 35 degrees due south. Uh, this optimizes it more for winter rather than summer when we have plenty of sun. Building these ground mount structures was a lot of work. Fortunately, we had a very mild fall uh, with lots of good weather days, so uh, we were able to get the work done rather than working through winter. Even though I'd planned this out pretty well, uh, there still was some trial and error involved. And also working on the slope, uh, you know, this added some complexity to it. Once we got the basic frame uh, assembled and plumb and level, uh, we put a 50 pound bag of fast set concrete in each of the holes for, uh, for extra support. At this point, we had to start to measure, cut, and install the rest of the rafters, and there are a lot of them. Uh, to, again, to get the building permit approved, I needed to, to uh, place the rafters at 19 inch on center, which is, which is ridiculous, but I played with the rules and got the permit.
we made all the wood to wood connections using GRK truss screws uh, and and we used over 300 of them but they um, they work very well I made a last minute design change to prevent the south array from shading the, the, uh, the solar panels on the north array. I did this by raising the, the north array just a little bit higher off the ground and lowering the, uh, the south array a little closer to the ground. Installed diagonal braces on the four rear posts that give the structure lateral support. I had to do a lot of trenching to get the wires from the uh, south array to the north array and then from the north array to the house. Here Titan is helping me mark out where one of the trenches are going to go. Using the tractor helped a lot when digging the trenches, but I still had to do some of it by hand. Here I'm digging a hole to put in a pull box. I'm using 4 inch sewer pipe as conduit for wires between the arrays and the, and the house. Uh, there's a story here. Uh, eight or nine years ago I attempted to build a micro hydroelectric uh, system uh, and I found this sewer pipe on Craigslist for cheap and it would work perfect as a penstock 
uh, to get water to the turbine. Unfortunately, my, uh, my hydro system was a failure, but I had this pipe left over, so I'm repurposing it as conduit for the uh, solar panels. dug a long straight trench about a hundred feet long to put down some more four inch sewer pipe. Thank goodness I had the tractor for this job. Here is another big milestone. We're actually installing the solar panels. These are Blue Sun 460 watt bifacial panels, which I purchased from Signature Solar. Uh, I need 12 of them, um, but I ordered 14 because uh, of possible damage, and I'm glad I did because two of the panels were damaged in shipping. Uh, so, but I still had 12, so I could do it. I could complete the job. disadvantage in using wood for the ground mount is that wood expands and contracts with uh, changes of the weather. Uh, this has the potential to put too much stress on the panels because the panels are made of glass after all. To address this I left the mounting hardware loose to give the panels some wiggle room so that they can, uh, uh, they can move around a little bit without cracking them. Another challenge was that these panels weigh 62 pounds apiece, uh, but Martha and I are a good team and, uh, and uh, we got it done. I was able to use a tractor for the long straight trench, but when I got closer to the house, I had to dig it by hand because the trench had to, had to follow the contour of the, of the ground and the driveway.
I used 3 inch corrugated plastic drain pipe as conduit in smaller trench. Uh, this stuff is inexpensive and flexible so I was able to lay it down in a trench with ease. Here it is the beginning of December and fortunately the weather is, is very good um, so I was able to get all the outside work done. We were expecting bad weather but it actually turned out to be a very mild weather. In this phase of the project, I'm wiring up the, the solar panels, starting with a big heavy-duty black ground cable. I installed an 8-foot copper-clad ground rod for each of the two arrays. Uh, this is to ground the, the metal frames of the, uh, of the solo panels. On the arrays I installed grounding clamps on each of the six panels and then daisy chain uh, bare number six copper wire between each of the panels and then bonded that to the uh, to the black grounding conductor which goes to the to the ground rod. Each array has a junction box with conduits uh, that run to the pull box on the ground, and then which is connected to the uh, to the sewer pipe. Uh, this provides a pathway for all the electrical wires. Wires from the first panel and the last panel in the string are run to the junction box. The junction boxes I'm using are actually repurposed AC disconnect boxes that I was using in my original 12 volt system. I took out the AC disconnect guts and replaced it with DC fuses and connectors. The six panels on each array are wired in series and then the, the arrays, the two arrays are wired in parallel. Uh, this creates a 6S2P configuration uh, which provides the correct voltage and current um, to match the input requirements of my inverter. I had to fabricate several short jumpers uh, using special PV wire and MC4 connectors. Uh, this also required the use of specialized um, uh, cutters and a specialized crimping tool. I messed up on making these cables the first couple times. It is a learning process.
my design specs for the uh, for the arrays are uh, 23 amps at 305 volts uh, for 2760 watts. I had to rinse and repeat and do the wiring on the on the second array. It was the same arrangement, uh, six panels in series and that and two arrays in parallel. Here I'm pulling in a wire to connect the north array to the south array for the parallel uh, configuration. Um, I put the wire in the, in the four inch sewer pipe that I had previously uh, trenched into the ground. At this point we are testing the six series two parallel wiring configuration. Fortunately it all worked as expected. Another milestone day. We're going to run the wire all the way from the from the solar panel arrays through the conduit into the basement. First, I used a shop vac to suck in a small thin string, and then I used a string to pull in what's called mule tape, which we then use to actually pull in the wire. Quite a process. By the way, there's a story behind this wire. It is reclaimed from a 500 foot temporary wire that I installed from the house all the way down to the creek for, to run an irrigation pump when it was doing the, uh, the tree line driveway project. This is a long piece of wire, so we divided the pull up into three sections. First from the, uh, from the array to the pull box, then from the pull box to the house, and then from that from there into the basement. The wire got tangled up into the tripod and knocking it over, ruining my GoPro camera. Uh, but it's all right, I bought another used one on eBay for cheap. Back 
Back in 2011, as part of another project, I installed this hand hole and ran a bunch of conduits and pipes uh, into the basement. So here we're going to we're going to use one of those conduits for the uh, solar electric wire. We're going to repeat the process to get the wire into the conduit. First, I got a shop vac in the basement and I'm going to use that to pull in this little string. Then we'll use the string to pull in the mule tape and then use the mule tape to pull in the, the wire. Martha got a little carried away with the pink string. A project like this takes lots of good teamwork. Finally, the last of the three pulls. This was quite a job. We're communicating by yelling through the conduit. Probably would have been better to have walkie-talkies or use our cell phones. Yet another big milestone. We took delivery of the battery rack, inverter, and three batteries. Uh, this, this came in a uh, tractor trailer and the driver had to park in the middle of the road. He had me back my pickup truck up to, to the tractor trailer and then he used a forklift to move the pallet into the back of the truck. This equipment is heavy. The battery rack must have weighed 50 pounds. The inverter is, is 60 pounds. And each of the batteries are, are 100 pounds.
Now for the inside work, batteries, inverter, and all the wiring. Unfortunately, the battery rack got a little bent in, in transit, uh, but no problem. I did some body work and fixed it. As it ended up, I had to take the batteries out and put them back in several times to get them to line up right. The inverter is supposed to be mounted to a non-combustible material. Fortunately, I got this nice solid uh, concrete block wall to attach it to. Wiring, more wiring. Here I'm attaching the uh, uh, battery terminals to the bus bar that's built into the battery cabinet. December 21st, the winter solstice and the shortest day of the year, and I'm doing initial testing of a solar electric system.
this is state of charge, uh, which is the, it's the gas gauge. Okay. Installing the conduit for the AC wiring. The inverter has both a 240 volt AC input and a 240 volt AC output. Um, I, I've, as usual, I didn't get it right the first time, so this is actually the second time I'm installing the conduit. I read a lot about issues with neutral and ground bonding uh, with uh, solar power inverters. So I elected to have an off-grid system and completely separate from the, uh, the normal on-grid wiring and used a large 50 amp range plug-in cord to, uh, to make the connection. Testing the new AC input for the inverter. One thing that made this inside wiring job a little easier is that I'm repurposing a sub panel that I originally installed for, for generator backup. Installing the heavy duty battery cables. This is 2 slash 0 gauge welding cable. I had to buy a special crimping tool in order to uh, crimp the gigantic lugs onto the cable. Major milestone. This is commissioning day. 40 amps. So it's charging the battery pack with 44, 45 amps. And our solar is producing 13 amps.
Commissioned. Hello, uh, it's February 23rd, 2023, and uh, we now have uh, almost two months of real world experience with our solar power system. Um, these arrays are working fantastic. Uh, right now, on a bright February day, they're producing. Um, 3,800 watts of power. Uh, that is that is pretty darn good. Uh, the system has a theoretical maximum of 5,500. Um, I've seen on really bright days, I've seen it approach getting close to 5,000 watts. So I think I think during the summertime we'll be able to get um, we'll be able to reach the theoretical maximum. Got this white gravel working on putting underneath the, the panels uh, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, so I don't have to mow under there. But the second reason is these panels are actually what are called bifacial, which means they get most of the power from the front, uh, but they can also absorb some power from the back. So by putting the white rocks down there, it helps reflect the light up and um, hopefully give a bit more power. Not that we need it, but uh, try to get as much as we can. So here we are at the heart of the system. We have the, the, the battery cabinet, we have the inverter, and we have the, uh, the off-grid sub-panel. Um, the system's working very well. Um, I'm very happy with it. Uh, so far, I've invested $17,500 uh, in these, the stuff that, and almost half of it is, are these batteries. Very expensive. Um, but I think it's worth it. The, uh, um, it's going to take a long time to, to recover or to um, pay back, uh, but that's okay. We uh, submitted for a 30% federal tax credit this year, or, or 2022, so we should get a refund from that, and I'm going to use that money to apply right to the, to the home equity loan we use to, uh, to finance the system. Um, the inverter is capable of outputting 6,000 watts. Uh, but I don't have nearly that much load on it yet. I'm continually adding things. Uh, batteries, we have currently with the four battery modules, we have, um, um, so that's a little over 20,000 watt hours of storage. And I just ordered another battery, which will give us about 25,000 watt hours of storage. Uh, currently, we can eke out two days of autonomy, which means uh, we can run just on the solar stuff for, for two days. Um, with the new battery, we should be able to easily do two days. Um, but if we have any, any weather conditions longer, cloudy longer than two days, then it'll revert back to, to grid power. So this morning, the batteries were down to 54%. And uh, uh, that was after making breakfast and using a coffee pot and all that stuff. Uh, but it's now back up to 64%. So uh, we're getting there and, and we're generating 4,000, 
almost 2100 watts of, uh, of solar power, so that's, that's pretty decent. So the things I got hooked up to the, to the solar power system are um, the, uh, the well pump, very important. Uh, the kitchen refrigerator, also very important. Um, um, got the microwave oven, uh, all the kitchen receptacles so for small appliances, coffee pots and crock pots and uh, toasters and whatever. Uh, all the lighting in the house and even some lighting outside. Um, got the HRV, which is a ventilation system and the range hood dishwasher that's hooked up there, which is running right now. Um, and then yet just yesterday or a couple days ago, I installed a, under, a small under counter water heater uh, and that's being powered by this thing too. Um, so what I left on the grid are the, the real big things like the water heater, uh, the heating and uh, you know, heating and air conditioning, um, the clothes dryer, the kitchen oven, the kitchen stove top, those are the heavy hitters and, and um, this system will be able to power a little bit of that but, but not all of it. I just chose to leave all that stuff on the grid. Um, so that's still connected. So that's it. We're, uh, we're very happy with the system. Uh, payback period is going to be long but that's okay. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's working well and it's starting to save us, we can already start to see on our electric bill. Now, it's only been two months and so we don't have a good track record yet, but we can already see our, our electric bill going down. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a, a big thumbs up and in true YouTube style, um, smash the subscribe button so you can uh, be notified whenever I publish a random, uh, random video. Thank you.